these variants uh, represent a real challenge. We have been hearing about variants of the coronavirus for weeks now. Two of them, one first found in the UK, the other in South Africa, have now been confirmed in Canada. And that has officials sounding the alarm. If these new strains take hold, the consequences will be dire. The third wave is going to be upon us very soon, and that third wave is much worse than the first and second combined. On Friday, Ottawa announced new mandatory quarantine rules to discourage non-essential travel, with flights to Mexico and the Caribbean suspended until the end of April. All in hopes of curbing the spread of the variants. But will it work? And have we learned anything new about these variants? these variants. We're joined now by infectious disease specialist Dr. Lisa Barrett and once again Dr. Zane Chagla. Dr. Barrett, let's begin with the travel restrictions announced by the federal government. There's concern that they're not enough and here's what the federal transport minister had to say on Rosemary Barton Live this morning. We even considered banning all flights but that would have would have had a detrimental impact on our uh, uh, the delivery of essential products and services to Canada. So, Dr. Barrett, how do you feel about what the government has done in terms of travel? It's a great step. Clearly, we weren't getting there with restricting international travel without some restrictions. And so this gives people a little bit of something to fall back on. However, I do think that one of the key hallmarks of some of these variants, wherever they are, inside or outside our borders, is that they may transmit very quickly and quite possibly before we can keep track of them. And so that means that what I'm saying is that international travel restriction is great, but we also need to be very, very aware that we should be restricting travel within our borders across the country to just essential travel as well. And so I would look forward to people picking up on that fairly quickly and paying attention to the quarantine rules that go along with the travel restrictions. And of course, you're in Halifax and, and the, the ban on interprovincial travel, or at least the restrictions have worked well for your province. They've worked very well. And, and as much as I love Atlantic Canadians and Nova Scotians, as well as our leadership, which have been very effective, part of our success outside being on the edge of the edge of the continent is that we are very, very, very aware of lack of travel and quarantine. So, you know, the proof is a little bit in the proof. That's a great question. So viruses undergo mutation. That's part of a normal process, like every other being on Earth. Um, but, you know, these mutations that are described in the variants, both in South Africa and Brazil and the UK, are essentially like a fingerprint. They're unique to these strains. There's a set of different mutations that really set it apart from others. And so, yes, you, viruses could mutate to be similar to the UK, Brazil and South Africa. But essentially, when we're looking for these strains, we are looking specifically for these fingerprints, not something in Canada that has switched to that. And, you know, we know that the, the variant that originally was in the UK is in Ontario. And I guess, uh, Dr. Chagla, it, it makes us realize that it makes the vulnerable even more vulnerable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're going to figure out where this is going to spread, all you have to do is look at where COVID is spreading now and really interesting. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The federal government insists airlines are working to get Canadians abroad back home. Many flights to popular sun destinations are being cancelled as part of Ottawa's plan to restrict travel and stop the spread of COVID-19. The other component is having to pay to quarantine upon landing back in Canada. So there's a frenzy to get home to avoid the costly bill. Here's Mike Drolet. Like thousands of other Canadians, escaping winter from Mexico's warmth proved too enticing for Pat Hall and her husband. Despite the warnings about traveling, they say they haven't felt any more at risk of getting COVID than they were at home in Calgary. They've got quite a few rules here, actually. I find people driving even in their cars are wearing masks. So they're taking it pretty seriously down here. But like other Canadians on vacation down south, they're booking early flights home. All flights on Canadian Airlines to Mexico and the Caribbean have been cancelled as of Sunday and return flights as of February 14th. 
and international travelers arriving in Canada will soon have no choice but to spend $2,000 for a COVID test in three days in a quarantine hotel. Rules Dr. Anna Banerjee hopes will help avoid another surge. Is it too late? Probably not, because March break is coming up and people are tired. And, uh, you know, we saw what happened during the holidays when, you know, they said, well, um, the restrictions came in a little bit late. And so half of Canada uh, engaged with people outside of their household. So long as they pay for the quarantine hotel, nothing is stopping Canadians from traveling. There are plenty of flights leaving Toronto for Cancun on Monday just none with Canadian Airlines. And if Canadians want to fly on Air Canada or WestJet to California, Florida or Hawaii, they can. And yet the voters in Ontario and Quebec are able to go to Florida and back without the same kind of penalty whatsoever. So we're fine. I find that just a little annoying, to be honest with you. And he's not the only one. Our new slogan has been discourage vacations, not family. Dr. David Poon fought and won the right for unwed partners to reunite in Canada. The new rules, he says, paints them with the same brush as those on vacation. And he's afraid families will once again be split up. The people have waited months for their visa, ready to see their family, and then suddenly an extra $2,000, they can't afford that. Mike Trillet, Global News, Toronto. Behind these walls, no end to the nightmare. More than 50 residents now dead at Roberta Place, a devastating outbreak fueled by a variant. She doesn't look great, and uh, she's not definitely not 100%. Jeremy Taggart's mother, Burl, tested positive, as has almost every other resident and dozens in the nearby community. It spread through the whole building. It's a 100% failure. The specter of more contagious variants spurring new action today from an obviously concerned Ontario Premier. If these new strains take hold, the consequences will be dire. The province launching a six-point plan, including mandatory testing of international arrivals at Pearson starting Monday, screening more positive tests to determine how widespread the variants already are, and deploying more rapid testing kits to high-priority settings like schools. The variant first detected in the UK is expected to be the dominant strain of the virus in Ontario by the end of March. Early evidence says it's more difficult to control and perhaps more deadly. So even as cases are going down now, it's a race for time, a uh, race against time to get people. dozen gathered in this Regina parking lot this morning because In dark times, people seek the light, the burning ember of a winter sun on the horizon, and hills to climb in search of perspective. Yes, a year after the first case of COVID-19 was reported in the United Kingdom, a death rate that's higher than almost anywhere in the world. This was Boris Johnson Speaker, taking questions uh, in the like British Parliament yes, last week. Speaker, there will indeed be a time when we must learn the lessons of, of what has happened, reflect on them and prepare, Mr Speaker. I don't think that moment is now when we are in the throes of fighting this wave of the new variant. For his critics though, it is precisely Johnson's failure to learn from his missteps in the spring that has led to an even more devastating fall and now winter. With the first lockdown, everything got shut and then everything's open again and then the virus spread it again. Street artist Nathan Bowen is braving lockdown fines to paint a mural in the middle of London. Providing people with a little hope in bleak times, he says, is essential. 
So we're saying thank you. The paramedics do the hardest job. They're the ones that deliver uh, the patients. So I think it's important to you know put them up on, on the street. London ambulances have become ubiquitous in the capital, pacing the streets and delivering fragile cargo to waiting hospitals and care workers at breaking point. There were about 18,000 people in hospitals with COVID-19 over Christmas. Just there were about eight. thousand people in hospitals with COVID-19 over Christmas. Just over a month later, there are more than 30,000. The numbers that we're seeing um, of, of death and people dying is something that I don't think anybody can, can really fully grasp. Yeah. We first met Canadian acute medicine doctor Amon Sandu last spring when she was dealing with the first wave of COVID-19 patients in the UK. Mm. It was hard enough then, she says. This time, the number in hospital is nearly double that, leaving many facilities short-staffed and struggling to find room for patients. We were having to triage them outside in the parking lot. We just did not have the capacity to actually see them in the hospital. Sandu had hoped there might be more support for the National Health Service after the first wave, especially after the Prime Minister succumbed to the virus. Here he is clapping for healthcare workers just before being taken to hospital himself. Now, says Sandu, many healthcare workers simply feel taken for granted by a government that hasn't done its homework. And the timing of the lockdown is reflective of that, where our doctors and um, scientists were saying, you know, these restrictions need to come sooner, and they didn't. So I think that speaks for itself in a way. Johnson waited until January. Journalism has consistently undermined efforts to fight the pandemic. David King is a former chief scientific advisor for Britain. It's a problem of leadership, and uh, I'm, I'm quite convinced that. Uh... It's because of the detection in early December of a new, more contagious strain of the virus. King insists it doesn't let the government off the hook. We really gave that new mutant a big boost by having that Christmas break. People traveling all around the country was just the best thing to do to spread a new virus. And now, of course, it's right across the United Kingdom. There is, though, hope on the horizon. You'll we'll find a piece of it at Salisbury Cathedral. Vaccinations by lamplight and organ music. One of the venues the NHS has commandeered to deliver vaccines the government gambled on back in the spring. Nine million people have now been given their shots, putting Britain in the top three of vaccinating countries and offering a potential saving grace for Johnson, according to Conservative MP and former Health Minister Jeremy Hunt, who admits there have been plenty of mistakes. But I also think history will uh, factor in the fact that Britain has been the most successful large country when it comes to the vaccine rollout, and that may well save many lives uh, during the course of this year. Um, and so I think from the government's point of view, they will point to that as well as being a very important part of our overall response. The success of the vaccination program relying on the NHS and local health authorities contrasts with Johnson's failure to deliver what he said would be a world-beating test, trace and isolate system. The government paid millions of pounds to private companies with no healthcare experience and it's still struggling today. This is the single Well, hello, hello. I hope you are all doing well. I am here with my trusty cat, Klaus, who insists on being in my lap this entire time. Uh, even when I was prepping, he's still on my lap. When he's in this mood, he just... He's just all loving and will not leave, so... You can hear him purring right now. Hear that? He's a happy cat. 
Anyways. Look at this lovely little mural we have here. It's almost like a double mask, don't you think? Interestingly enough. Bowen and Backmore. Or was it Blackmore? Oh, whatever. Paramedic. This is an interesting looking city here. I don't know if this is what the city in UK looks like. I don't know. Makes me think of Seattle for some reason. Anyways, this is not the point of the show. I'm here to talk about the variants. Oh, the variants. What timing you have. Uh, let's jump to this. I'm going to close these videos first because they are lagging. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to go through them anyways. I'll let you... I'll let, the, let them run through. That's good enough. Alright, so here's the article. I have not... Um, I kind of skimmed through briefly. But um, I'll be reading it quickly. Because I don't want to take the, too long in this video because... Um, I want to be able to publish it tomorrow, hopefully. So I got to process it first. Anyways, uh, from the New York Times, what do you do to avoid the new coronavirus variant right now? It's more contagious than the original and spreading quickly. Upgrade your mask and double down on precaution, precautions to protect yourself. Looking at the sign here. Fake or something. Recycle the body shop plastic empties here. That's the body shop. Alright. This is by Tara Parker Pope on January 19th, 2021. Updated January 28th, 2021. New variants on the coronavirus continue to emerge. A few have caused concern in the United States because they are so contagious and spreading fast. To avoid them, you'll need to double down on the same pa pandemic precautions that have kept you safe so far. The variant known as B117, which was first identified in Britain, has the potential to infect an estimated 50% more people, and the researchers have begun to think that it may also be slightly more deadly. Uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has predicted that the variant could become the dominant source of infection in the United States by March. A variant first reported in South of Africa has found its way to South Carolina, and scientists are studying whether a variant with a different mutation and first found in Denmark, along with one identified in California, have caused a surge of cases in California. The new variants appear to latch onto, your cell, onto our cells more efficiently. You can find a detailed look inside one of the variants here. Oh yeah, let's do that. Uh, the change suggests it could take less virus and less time in the same room with an infected person for someone to become ill. People infected with the variant may also shed larger quantities of virus, which increases the risk to people around them. The exact mechanism in which it's more transmissible isn't entirely known, said Nathan D. Gurubag. Um, I probably not Gog. I don't know how to pronounce it. Gruba, whatever. Assistant professor and ep epidemiologist at the Yale School of Public Health. It might just be that when you're infected, uh, you're exhaling more infectious virus. So how do you avoid a more contagious version of the coronavirus? I spoke with some of the leading virus and infectious disease experts what, uh, about what makes the new variant so worrisome and what can we do about it. Here's what they say to, uh, had to say. How can I protect myself from the new coronavirus variant? The variants spread the same way the coronavirus has always spread. You're most likely contract to contract the virus if you spend time in an enclosed space breathing the air of an infected person. The same things that have protected you from the original strain should, have protect, should help protect you from a variant, although you may need to be more rigorous. Wear a two or three layer mask. Don't spend time indoors with people not from your household. Avoid crowds and keep your distance. Wash your hands often and avoid touching your face. 
the first thing I say to people is that it's not the different virus. All the things we have learned about the virus, this virus, still apply. Said Dr. Ashish K. Jha, Dean of the Brown University School of Public Health. It's not like this variant is somehow magically spreading through other means. Anything risky under the normal strain just becomes riskier with the variant. And let's face it, after months of pandemic living, many of us have become lax about our COVID safety precautions. Maybe you've let down your guard and you're spending time indoors en masse with trusted friends. Or perhaps you've been dining in restaurants or making more trips to the grocery store each week than you did at the start of the pandemic, you filthy scum. <laughs> the arrival of the variants means you should try to cut back on potential exposures where uh, you can and double down on basic precautions for the next few months until you have to you and the people around you get vaccinated. Uh, quote, the more I hear about the new variants, the more concerned I am, said Lindsay Marr, professor of civil and environmental engineering of Virginia Tech and one of the world's leading aerosol scientists. I think there is no room for error or sloppiness in following precautions, whereas before we might have been able to get away with letting one slide. Should I upgrade my mask? You should be wearing a high-quality mask when you run errands, go shopping, or find yourself in a situation where you're spending time indoors with people who don't live with you, Dr. Marr said. I am we now wearing my best masks when I go to the grocery store, she said. The last thing I want to do is get COVID-19 in the month before I get vaccinated. Dr. Marr's lab recently tested 11 mask materials and found that the right cloth mask properly fitted does a good job of filtering viral particles of the size the size most likely to cause infection the mess the best mask has three layers two cloth layers with a filter sandwiched in between masks should be fitted around the bridge of the nose and made flexible material to reduce gaps head ties create a better fit on the than the ear loops if you don't want to buy a new mask, a simple solution is to wear additional mask when you find yourself in closer proximity to strangers. I wear a single mask when I walk my dog or exercise outdoors, but if I'm going to the store, talking, taking a taxi, or getting in the subway, I double mask my by using a disposable surgical mask and, and covering it with my cloth mask. Do I need an N95 medical mask? Well, medical workers who come into close contact with sick patients rely on the gold standard N95 masks. You don't need that level of protection if you're avoiding a group gatherings, if you're avoiding group gatherings, limiting shopping trips and keeping your distance from others. N95s are hard to get, said Dr. Ya or Ja. I don't think people should think oh Klaus just left. Amazing. Uh, I don't think people should think that's what they need. Certainly, there are lots of masks out in the marketplace that are pretty good. I guess Klaus didn't, wasn't buying the BS I was talking about, so he had to leave. It's like, double mask? What? I don't think so. He got out of there. Um, where am I? If you're working in, in an office or grocery store or find yourself in a situation where you want an added mask protection, you can get an alternative, alternative to the N95, Dr. Jaw suggested, using a KF94 mask, a type of mask made in South Korea that can be purchased easily online. It resembles the N95 with some differences. It's made of a similar non-woven material that blocks 94% of the hardest to trap viral particles, but the KF94 has ear loops instead of elastic headbands, so it won't fit as snugly as the N95. The blah blah blah. Just it's just a freaking sales pitch here. I'm not reading the rest of that. Uh, blah blah blah. Okay. Mm, you're spending 30, 45 minutes at the grocery store. Cut your time down. Blah whatever. Uh, if you're waiting in line, be mindful of staying at least six feet apart from the people ahead of you and behind you. Try to deliver. Try to deliver your curbside pickup if that's not an option for you, or if that is an option for you. Uh, if you're spending time indoors with people who aren't from your household, consider skipping those events until you and your friends get vaccinated. <laughs> 
If you must spend time with others, wear your best mask. Make sure the space is well ventilated, open windows and doors, and keep the visit as short as possible. It's still safest to take your social plans outdoors. And if you're thinking about air travel, it's a good idea to reschedule given the high number of cases around the country and an emergence of the more contagious variant. The new variants are making me think twice about my plan to teach in person, which would have been with masks and with good ventilation anyway, Dr. Mara said. They're making me think twice about getting on an airplane. Will the current COVID vaccine work against the new variants? Experts are cautiously optimistic that the current generation of vaccines will be mostly effective against the emerging coronavirus variants. Earlier this month, Pfizer and BioNTech announced that their COVID vaccine works against one of the key mutations presence, uh, present in some of the variants. That's good news! But some data also suggests that variants will, with certain mutations, particularly in the first in the one first seen in South Africa, may be more resistant to the vaccines. Well, the data, while the data are concerning, experts said the current vaccines generate extremely high levels of antibiotics. Antibiotics? I mean antibodies. <laughs> they are likely to, lead to at least prevent serious illness in people who are immunized and get infected. Uh, the reason I am cautiously optimistic is that from what they know about how vaccines work, it's not just an, one antibody that provides all protection, said Dr. Adam Luring, Associate Professor of Infectious Disease at the University of Michigan. When you get vaccinated, you generate antibodies all over the spike protein. That makes it less likely that one mutation here or there is going to leave you completely unprotected. That's what gives me reason for optimism that this is going to be okay in terms of the vaccine. But there's more work to be done. If I catch COVID-19, will I know if I have the new variant? Probably not. If you test positive for the coronavirus, the standard PCR test can't defi definitively determine if you have the variant or the other strain. While some PCR test results can signal if a person is likely to be infected with a variant, that information probably won't be shared with patients. The only way to know for sure when the, with which variant is circulating is to get gene sequencing technology. But that technology is not used to alert individuals of their status. While some public health and university laboratories are using genomic surveillance to track the preva prevalence of variants in a community, the United States doesn't have a large scale. Or it doesn't yet have a large-scale nationwide system for checking coronavirus genomes for new mutations. That's coming. Treatment for COVID-19 is the same whether you have the original strain or the variant. You can read more, blah, 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 blah. Uh, are children more at risk, blah, blah, blah. Children appear to be appear to get affected with the variant but at about the same rate as original strain. Uh, yeah. Uh, likely to adults, same thing, blah blah blah. If I already have COVID-19, am I likely to have the same level of immunity to the new strain? More experts agree that once you have COVID-19, your body has some level of natural immunity to help fight off a second infection. Although it's not known how long the protection lasts, the variants circulating in Brazil and South Africa appear to have mutations that allow the virus to invade natural antibodies. And again, I said it! Antibodies? What the hell? What the heck? Um, antibodies. And reinfect someone who has already the, had the virus. The concern is based on lab tests using antibodies. Antibody. Uh, that word is troubling me tonight for some reason. Of, uh, of people with previous infection. So whether this that translates to more reinfections in the real world isn't known. The effect of the vaccine against these variants isn't known yet either. Well, this sounds frightening. Scientists are hopeful that even if the vaccines don't fully protect against new vari variations of the virus, the antibodies generated by the vaccine still will protect people from more serious illness. <sighs> so, what does this new variant look like? Oh, it looks just like... Well... Wait, is this the one? Is this what it looks like? Isn't it funny? Actually, I showed this before. It looks just like uh, the Vent 201 coronavirus.
a little plushy there that they were pitching. Uh, all right, there. Yeah, okay. Written in his letters. Mm hmm. All right, yeah. Right on. All right, that's boring. You get it. Gobbledygook. Here's uh, some of the variants of SARS CoV 2. I got your lineage B11207. B11.7 or B11.7 variant of co of, of concern uh, cluster 5 501 V2 variant lineage P1 lineage B1429 slash cal dot 20c notable mut mutations D614G E484K and N51Y. There you go. It says first detection for the B11207 is in Nigeria. In Nigeria, uh, notable mutations P68. One. It's just a bunch of freaking nonsense. All right, we're moving on from there. I mean, it's totally legit science there, YouTube. That's what I meant to say. Never mind what I was saying. It's totally legit science. My goodness, I'm already in a half hour. Holy cr crap. <laughs> Alright, so... Let's look at a little timeline. I gotta get moving on this. So, here's the timeline. Uh, I started here. You know, it, go, there's a, it goes way back, as you know. This is the time of the coronavirus, but I went to where it first started in the UK. Um, here, December 8th. December 8th, the United Kingdom begins its nationwide coronavirus immun immunization campaign. The same day, the United Kingdom identifies a new variant of SARS-CoV-2 that appeared to be more transmissible. Hmm, that's interesting timing. The same day? They started the vaccination is the same day they discovered a new variant. Oh, interesting. Um, week of December 5th to 13th, uh, United States government grants emergency use of Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. UK identifies variant and launches immunization campaign. Do 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 do. 13th, somebody dies. Someone has allergic reaction. No, the French president tested positive. What are you doing, Klaus? What are you doing? Klaus? What are you doing? What are you up to? Hmm? Wait, you want to back up? No. You can't. You left the show. Quit over the mask nonsense. I need you with me, man. Fine. Fine. Come on. Do it. Plus. There we go. He's back, everyone. He's back. Alright, so, yeah. This is coming in alright. Yeah, you can see that on the screen. Uh, South Africa announces a new variant of SARS-CoV-2 and says the virus seemed to be more transmissible and affect young people more. Hey, yep. Mm. Denmark announces it will exhume up to 5.5 million main carcasses after environmental inspectors found that they may be polluting water sources. Those are the, the mink that were had a uh, mutated version of the COVID. Uh, where we go? Oh, Israel soon followed the other countries, including Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Switzerland, imposing travel restrictions on South Africa over the new vari coronavirus variant. Uh, all right. Bolaris. 
becomes the first country to register the Russian vaccine Sputnik V outside of Russia. Brazil with its China Sinovac vaccine. Phase 3 trials. Efficacy of 50%. UK or the WHO says UK variant SARS-CoV-2 appears to be more infectious but likely will not affect vaccines. Mm -hmm. And you get the point. Go through there. Variant, 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 vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. All just rolling out at the same time basically. I haven't read this one either. I don't know. It might be long, so. Coronavirus, a timeline of how the deadly COVID-19 outbreak is evolving. COVID, or global data, epi, epi, bleh, epidemiologists report global COVID infections pass 101.5 million, deaths near 2.2 million. Globally, the total confirmed cases of COVID-19 have reached over blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's just gonna tell me that things died. International variant sweeps across African continent. Continent, I mean. Europe suffers vaccine shortages. Vaccine news. And lockdown updates. Everyone gets locked down. How COVID is driving technology into economic super cycle. That's interesting. Sunil Varma, an ec economist, retweeted a discussion on why Asian economies could be outperformers in 2021, given that the potential for vaccine deployment and reopening of the global economy, according to the International Monetary Fund projections, China is expected to overtake the U.S. GDP only in 2030. However, post-pandemic China seems to be climbing to the top spot of the global GDP as early as 2028. Uh, he's further added that although all countries are going to witness better growth rates, the pace of recovery would diverge between the regions. Consequently, China has been in the first, uh, first out in the leader of the pack. Wasn't this predicted by the World Economic Forum in its 2016 little video about um, eight predictions for the world? by 2030, I believe it was. And Russia, uh, the U.S. would be replaced by, uh, or overtaken by countries, and uh, China was one of the main countries that they showed, so. Predictive programming coming to, uh, or I guess further being predicted because it hasn't happened yet. Uh, in her views, two factors are driving this divergence, the first being the resilience co against COVID and the subsequent role of vaccination programs, and the second being the exposure to the larger sector that has been resilient through 2020, that is, the technology sector. The states and the technology sector is a super cycle which will not only continue because of the increasing demand arising from the trends such as remote working, uh, smartphone usage and server demand, but also due to the demand coming from significant areas such as 5G, AI, and others. I'm not reading more, so we'll move on. And yeah, Nova, Nova, Novavax. I believe they are getting approval, I saw somewhere. Uh, they have efficacy, something like 89% or something. Oh yeah, 89.3%. Which is just all nonsense. Their tests are skewed. I mean... Totally effective, YouTube. Totally good stuff. Uh, okay. It's just a long new, you know. I never, I didn't look at that before. But, uh, let's. The first, um, was it, the, they said, what was their first one? No. Did I close it? The timeline. Let's look for the word variant. I want to see when they say on this timeline. 
because I'm curious if it will match up with what I've seen in the past. It's 14, okay? 14 was seen. Oh, okay, so the UK is the first one they report, December 8th. But isn't that funny? Because I had made a tweet back in. What's the date here? October 29th, 2020. Mutant COVID strain in Spanish farm workers sparked Europe's second wave, says scientists. An international team of scientists that has been tracking the virus through its genetic mutations has described the extraordinary spread of the variant called 20AU, uh, AEU1, which wasn't in that Wikipedia thing or anything. Click that. Also, if you remember, because I also skimmed through, um, this was mentioned back in June. Remember when Dr. Fauci came out and said that there was a new virus that kind of just didn't happen. Nothing happened from it. The virus, which scientists are calling G4EH1N1, has not yet been shown to infect humans, but it is exhibiting reassortment capabilities. I thought the COVID was part of it. I hadn't actually looked at this. A long time. I just remember seeing um, I just remember it. I just didn't remember the details. I thought COVID was partly mixed in there. Seems to be just the two flus. So my mistake if that's the case. Uh do, do, do. I'm just going to look for the word coronavirus. That's something to take note of. This could still pop up later. They could they could bring it up later on in their agenda. I'm just going to type the word in because I don't want to waste time. He's compared it. Earlier this month, Fauci said COVID-19 turned out to be his worst nightmare. Okay, so nothing there. How about coronavirus? You might say that. Oops. Beeps my ear whenever I hit something wrong. Very annoying. Okay, so no, there's nothing. All right, so that's my mistake. I thought that was connected. And it's interesting to note, though, that was back in June. They were trying to, you know, pre prepare us for a future flu thing. Flu flu. I will s look at that later. Anyways, this one. Mutant COVID-19 strain in Spanish farm workers sparked second wave in Europe. It's the, okay. A coronavirus variant that originated in Spanish farm workers has spread rapidly through much of Europe since the summer and now accounts for the majority of new COVID-19 cases in several countries and more than 80% in the UK. Excuse me? What? An international team of scientists has been tracking the virus through its genetic mutations has described the extraordinary spread of the variant called 20 a EU1 in a research paper to be published on Thursday. Stop trying to play videos on me. Their work suggests that people returning from holiday in Spain played a key role in transmitting this virus across Europe, raising questions about whether the second wave that is sweeping the continent could be have been reduced by improved screening at airports and other transport hubs. Because each variant has its own genetic signature, it can be traced back to the place it originated. From the spread of 20A, e, I'm just going to say 20A. It seems clear that the virus prevention measures in place were often not sufficient to stop onward transmission of introduced variants this summer, said Emma. Hodkoff Croft, 
an evolutionary gen geneticist at the univers first, yeah, sorry, University of Basel and lead author of the study, uh, which is yet to be published in a peer-reviewed journal, the scientist, scientific teams in Switzerland and Spain, Spain are now rushing to examine the behavior of the variant to establish whether it may be more deadly or more infectious than other strains. Dr. Hodcroft stressed that there was no evidence that the variant's rapid spread is due to mutation that increases transmission or impacts clinical outcomes, but she emphasized that the 20A was unlike any ver version of the SARS-CoV-2, the ver virus that causes COVID-19 she had previously come across. I've not seen any variant with this so sort of dynamic for, the, as long, for as long as I've been looking at genomic sequences of coronavirus in Europe, she said. In particular, the teams are working with vir vir virology laboratories to establish whether 20A carries a particular mutation in the spike protein that the virus uses to enter human cells that might alter its behavior. All viruses develop mutations, changes in the inter individual letters of their genetic code, which can group together in new variants and strains. Another mutation of SARS-CoV-2 called D614G, we saw that one, has been identified, which is believed to make the virus more infectious. Uh, Joseph Favre, a genetic epidemi epidemiologist at U Yale University who was not involved in research. Oh, they love to do that. Anytime they do a report, I don't know if you've noticed this, every, it's like so often I see this, and I should have pointed this out long ago, that whenever they have a study, they always get someone who was not involved in the study talk about the study. It's so annoying. It's never talking to someone from the study. It's always someone who was not involved. Noise, noise me to no end. Uh, published on Thursday said, We need more studies like this to find mutations that have risen to high frequency in the population and then reverse engineer them to see whether they make the virus more transmissible. The new variant, which has six distinctive genetic mutations, emerged among agriculture workers in northeast Spain in June and moved quickly through the local population according to the study. Tandra Stadler, professor of the computational evolution at the ETH Zurich, who is part of the project, said the ana analysis of virus samples taken from Europe, across Europe in recent weeks showed they were derived from the same variant. We can see the virus has been introduced multiple times in several countries and may, may and many of these introductions have gone to spread through the population, Professor Stadler said. Hinaki Comus, head of the said COVID, sec, sec COVID, COVID Spain Consortium, said that studying the virus and a co-author of the study added, one variant aid, aided by initial super spreading event can quickly become prevalent. The researchers concluded that the risky behavior of holiday holiday makers in Spain, such as ignoring social distancing guidelines, who can continue who continue to engage in such behavior at home, helped the spread of the new variant. The research showed that the U new variant accounted for more than eight out of the ten cases in the UK, eighty percent of cases in Spain and 60% in Ireland and up to 40% in Switzerland and France. Stringent lockdowns in the early part of the year helped spring the initial COVID-19 surge under control, with new cases subsequently reduced over the summer. But the vi virus has spread rapidly, ah, sorry, rapidly back through Europe in recent weeks in a resurgence that has forced national leaders to introduce painful new restrictions on social activities. Now, let's look up this variant and see if that's the one that they announced December 8th in the UK. So if it isn't, then what the heck's going on?
Oh, maybe. Oh, okay. It is the same one. All right. Well, that makes more sense then to me that they're saying that one. If like they just didn't announce it officially until December eighth at the same time as the vaccine rollout, that's even sus that's more suspicious. They timed it that way. Uh, science has identified a new variant of the coronavirus, which may be linked to the faster spread of COVID-19. In a speech, House guys talked, and we don't care. On December 19th, the government's chief scientific advisor said some stuff, and people said, okay. And then it was a dominant strain, blah, blah, blah. Where he suggests that the new strain could be up to 70% more bullshit. Uh, what is the COVID, new COVID-19 strain? So... The VUI 2020 12 slash 01. Wait, wait, wait. What? That's not the same. That's not her. That's not her boy. That's not her boy variant. What are you talking about? Originally named that. And it's now being referred. Okay, so it's not even the same one. Seriously? Sorry, I'm just... I swear I saw it earlier. As the one I thought it was. But now I'm, I don't see it anymore. I guess my eyes are playing tricks on me. All right, so it is total BS. All right. All righty then. I'm not going to read through this. Wait, wait, wait. In October, a suggest study suggests that the coronavirus variant that originated in Spanish farm workers spread rapidly through Europe and accounted for the, for the UK, most UK cases. This variant, called 20A, is known to have spread from farm workers to local populations in Spain in June and July, with people then returning to holiday in Spain most likely to play a key role in spreading the strain across Europe. Okay, but that doesn't say anything. It's 19, COVID-19 Genomics UK. Consortium said so predict whether any given mutation, blah blah blah. Alrighty, other virus strains known to scientists include blah 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 and blah blah blah. Alright, so it doesn't say anything. There's no connection there. So, alright then, so that timeline is BS. Uh, when they, when they said, um, um, when they discovered the variant, it wasn't the same. It wasn't the first one, that's for sure. But that coronavirus timeline, basically that was the only, that was the first one that they recognized in the timeline, so they're full of crap. Uh, this, wherever the study I was just looking at, this is saying that that was the prevalent thing in the UK, and then they're saying it's a different one. More BS. Nothing matches up. It's just all conveniently placed together. Oh, the same time the vaccine is rolled out. Uh, this is for a couple of reasons. I would think that A, because they want to continue people restrictions. They were setting us up for that when they were saying that the vaccine won't be a silver bullet. That's what the Theresa Tam said. And I'm sure they probably said something similar in the UK. Uh, and then... So they wanted people to be prepared that would still have to use all their other measures. And um, the other thing is, I think they want people like us to think that the vaccine has a direct connection to the new variants. Because everywhere that they're doing the vaccines, oh, variants are popping up. That's what we're seeing. So they have that side of the argument saying, oh, they're infecting people with the virus and I'm not saying the vaccine doesn't necessarily have a virus, like, that doesn't have a virus in it necessarily, because, for one, the vaccines are kept extremely cold. The Pfizer one specifically. I don't know about other virus, uh, vaccines. I know Moderna is not kept at an extremely low temperature like the 
Pfizer vaccine. The Pfizer vaccine is unique in its extremely low temperature, which happens to be the same, te same temperature that you store viruses at. So one would think, oh, there's probably a virus in that. And there very well could be, but I don't think it has anything to do with these variants because I think these variants were planned. They were setting us up, and I already showed you just then that they were saying it long ago before it was announced in the UK at the time that they delivered the vaccines. So it's just part of the storyline, and we can see that in this evidence here. I think this is the one, yep. I believe you'll remember this one you have been paying attention leaked info about Trudeau's crazy COVID plan for 2021 so someone in the LPC strategic committee had leaked the plans the roadmap if you will uh, we're not going to read this, so I guess I should just skim over it. Dear Removed, I want to provide you some very important information. I am a committee member within the uh, Liberal Party of Canada. I sit within several committees and groups with the information I'm providing is originally originating from the Strategic Planning Committee, which is steered by the PMO. I need to start off by saying that I am not happy doing this, but I have to. As a Canadian, and more importantly, as a pa parent who wants a better future, not only for my children, but for our other children as well, the other reason I am doing this is because roughly 30% of the committee members are not pleased with the direction this will take Canada. But our opinions have been ignored, and they plan on moving forward toward their goals. They have more made. They have also made it very clear that nothing will stop the planned outcomes. The roadmap and aim was set out by the PMO and is as follows. I'm drinking tea right now because it's very dry here lately. We've had a, we're having a cold streak here and uh, it's making the air extremely dry in my house. So I need some tea. But I'm good. I'm not uh, feeling sick or anything. It's just stuffy because of the dryness. Anyways, phase in secondary lockdown restrictions on a rolling basis, starting with major metropolitan areas first and expanding outward, expected by November 2020. Rush the acquisition or construction of isolation facilities across every province and territory, expected by December 2020. Now, we've seen both those things happen. Uh, we have, uh, what's his name? Not Rick Hillier. Is it John Hillier? John Hillier. Uh, detention centers. I'm typing with one hand because so I got the Klaus in the other. Just a quick recap. Oh, am I not going to find it? Was his name not John Hillier? I'll just put Hillier Parliament. Let's see if that rears me a better result. It looks like I spelled Parliament wrong, but that's fine because whatever. I didn't mean to. Okay, this is not working. Um. Uh, There, Randy Hillier. That's why. Yeah, totally false. Sure, sure. Even though <laughs> Trudeau just mentioned it recently when he was doing his address about the travel restrictions, he literally uh, just like slips it in there. I'll I'll play that for you in a moment once I play this real quick. Is this the video for it? No. This is some crap. But I got his name now. 
Get out of here. This is taking me much longer than I wanted to. I'm disappointed in myself. I was hoping to be quick. Anyways, I can just read it to you. Federal COVID-19 internment camps are not a thing in Canada. Blah, blah, blah. Conspiracy theory. Okay, no, this, this just annoys me. Um, okay, I saw his name. Where did his name go? Uh, I know the name, at least. Oh, my God. Sorry, things are slow. Andy. Hell yeah. Um. Yeah, I spell centers like a Canadian with the R E. Deal with it. <laughs> it just doesn't feel right any other way. I do spell it like when I'm referring to like the center of something, I'll do E R, but when I'm talking about like a facility, it's R E. That's how I roll in Canada. Oops, I'm just like sitting here, not doing anything. Is it not gonna, am I gonna be a fan of video? It's just like, it's been, oh, this looks like it. This looks like the one. Just like to refresh things here. Refresh our memories. So I haven't looked at this in a while. Next question, the member for Lanark Front, Matt Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is to the Premier. In my supplemental question yesterday, I asked this government if the people of Ontario should prepare for internment camps. In September, the federal government posted a call for expressions of interest for contractors to supply, provide, and manage quarantine isolation camps throughout every province and every territory in Canada. These quarantine isolation camps, however, are not limited to people with COVID, but provide a wide latitude for many people to be detained. Surely this government is aware of the intentions to build these isolation camps from coast to coast. And my question to the Premier is, how many of these camps will be built? And how many people does this government expect to detain? Question. Government House Leader. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it is very true that when people leave the country and when they come back in, that the uh, uh, the province is suggesting, and uh, and the federal government, in cooperation with the federal go government, we are suggesting that people uh, isolate uh, themselves. That has been a, a practice that has been very successful, not only here in the province of Ontario, but across uh, uh, across Canada. And we will, of course, be redoubling our efforts to make sure that uh, the people of the province of Ontario uh, remain safe, Mr. S Mr. Speaker. So, if the member is referring to the fact that uh, uh, that one of the public health policies is that when you return from a jurisdiction outside of the province of Ontario or from another country that you isolate yourself for uh, for two weeks I would suggest uh, uh, that that has been a good uh, a good policy that has been working in fact this house has been doing the same thing since we came back we are working in cohorts to make sure that the legislative assembly can continue to operate that's why we have two separate cohorts uh, mr. speaker response and with the cooperation of the official opposition that is why all members of the independents have been excluded from that cohort because we want them to be able to participate in debate. So we will continue to do everything in our power to make sure that this House continues, but that the people of the province of Ontario and Canada are kept safe. Supplementary question. Again, uh, back to the Premier. Here's the RFP, and in the RFP, it uses clear language to express that these camps can be used for a broad spectrum of people not limited to travelers indeed it doesn't even mention inter international travelers it's just a broad latitude of people and i'll send over the copy of the rfp after so your government is must be in negotiations negotiations and aware of these plans to potentially detain and isolate citizens and residents of our country and our province so speaker to the premier where will these camps be built how many people will be detained and for what reasons Questions. for what reasons can people be kept 
in these isolation camps. And I'd like to I'd like to have the Premier assure the people of Ontario. Member take a seat. The next question. And they just cut him off and he's done. Fantastic. Oh man. And then um we have uh just go to my channel. I shared uh Trudeau talking about the travel restrictions. On top of these flight cancellations, we're bringing in other measures as well. Starting next week, all international passenger flights must land only at the following four airports. Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto, and Montreal. In addition to the pre-boarding test we already acquire, as soon as possible in the coming weeks, we will be introducing mandatory PCR testing at the airport for people returning to Canada. Travelers will then have to wait for up to three days at an approved hotel for their test results at their own expense, which is expected to be more than $2,000. Those with negative test results will then be able to quarantine at home under significantly increased surveillance and enforcement. Those with positive tests will be immediately required to quarantine in designated government facilities to make sure they're not carrying variants of potential concern. ...to quarantine in designated government facilities to make sure they're not carrying variants of potential concern to quarantine in designated government facilities to make sure they're not carrying variants of potential concern. We will also, in the coming weeks, be requiring non-essential travelers to show a negative test before entry at the land border with the U.S. Anyways, they have facilities. He doesn't call them dissension centers. And he doesn't, you know, and this is to do with traveling, but... You can bet it's gonna. It's uh, one step away from what they were talking about back in. When was that? October or something? Anyways, back to the road plan, roadmap here. So we have that. Daily new cases of COVID 19 will surge beyond capacity of testing, increases, including increases in COVID related deaths following the same growth curves. Expected by end of November 2020. Complete and total secondary lockdown, much stricter than the first and second rolling f uh, phase restrictions. Uh, expected by the end of December 2020, early January 2021. Reform and expansion of the unemployment program to be trans transitioned into the universal basic income expected by the first quarter of 2021. So... We can kind of expect that CERB payment to turn into a universal basic income sometime at the end of the first quarter, or expected by the first quarter. We we'll haven't seen that one yet. That's something to keep an eye out for. Here is the one. Projected COVID-19 mutation and or co-infection with secondary virus, referred to as COVID-21, leading to a third wave with much higher mortality rate and higher rate of infection expected by February, which is where we're coming into right now. The third wave is coming. They just expected it by February. Um, where do I have that? Third wave. News. Coronavirus. New Brunswick's top doctor says third wave will... What will it do? It will be much worse than the first and second combined due to the emergency and more transmissible variants like the UK. Additional reaction needed to prevent a third wave of COVID-19 in Canada, experts. While vaccines offer more hope in the fight against coronavirus, experts argue that preventing a third wave 
the pandemic needs to be blah 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 Canadians must work to prevent the third wave as coronavirus roll vaccines roll out UK coronavirus third wave new variant to know what to know the uh, UK currently enduring a painful third wave of COVID-19 far worse than its European neighbors like Spain France Italy and Germany this is from two weeks ago that was from one month ago they're putting the third wave in there oh man two days ago concerns about a third wave Chibet said the strain is of is of concern to us and we are looking at it really closely in Belize uh, one week ago Biden plans a third wave of execute execute executive or actions for Friday okay so we get third wave programming in there as well Iran says it managed to contain third wave of pandemic uh, COVID third wave it compared to first several chances or survival chances and more likely to kill women interesting that's on the mirror with third wave compared to its first survival chances like kill more women Japan declare state of emergency for Tokyo area as third wave uh huh a little bit more three weeks ago Spain facing third wave as coronavirus hits two million uh, times of Israel staff at Jerusalem's hospital says it's collapsing under wave okay they, oh there we go medical personnel at capitals how to say say third wave outbreak is most severe yet patients getting sicker Irish Times I got a burning smell in my nose third wave COVID-19 patients share their experiences I got a burning smell in my nose with her okay it's the same thing uh, South Korean schools outbreaks fuel fear of third wave getting worse there are fears that infections and deaths will rise in the days ahead hampering efforts by governments to contain the third wave as and more serious blah 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 there you go tons of third wave programming who warned us about the th waves who warned us about the waves uh what am i looking for <laughs> i was gonna type in something i was like what am i gonna type in uh well we know who and i'll we'll just uh why don't we just jump over to old, to our old buddy jeff c's channel and uh Wait, what am I looking for? Uh, Jeff. There we go. We'll even have any up because he did delete a bunch. Let's see if he has any wave stuff. Oh, I know. Waves. No. That's too bad. Maybe it's in his encore. Uh, I wish he still had his videos. I wish he hadn't wiped them before he passed. It's too bad. Cause he was right about the waves for sure. He covered that. He called that one. That was a good call. I've been keeping track of them myself, and I've uh, made some. I've done some shows where I pointed it out. Not seeing anything. Just skimming through it again. Mm -hmm. Oh well, uh, I don't think he has any on his main channel. It's up to 52k now, so that's nice. It's almost 53k. At least uh, more people are finding out about our, about our, about our about Jeff's work. That's good. Uh, no. 
Nothing there. Nah, he had deleted all his stuff. Oh, well, you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you've seen it before. And if you haven't, well, he uh, pointed at the wave stuff fairly early in the beginning of this whole thing. He called that one really well. That was good. Uh, anyways, where am I at here? So I showed you the wave programming. It's third wave. So, third wave. Third wave. We're right on par with the roadmap so far. So what do we have to look forward to next? After that happens. Daily new cases of COVID-23 hospitaliz hospitalizations and COVID-19 and COVID-21 related deaths will exceed medical care facilities capacity expected first quarter and second quarter uh, 2021. Enhanced lockdown restrictions, referred to as third lockdown, will be implemented. Full travel restrictions will be imposed, including inter-province and inter-city. Imagine that. Inter-province and inter-city shutdowns. Lockdowns. They're not going to let us go anywhere. Uh, expected second quarter 2021 transitioning uh, of individuals into the Universal Basic Income Program. Expected mid quarter, expected mid quarter, second, sorry, mid second quarter 2021, uh, projected supply chain breakdowns, inventory shortages, large economic instability. So that's the going to be the food shortages. It's going to hit us in mid second quarter. That's when they're going to really hit us with the with the food stuff. Like they're going to hit us a bit here. In the, in the beginning of, you know, at the end, basically at the end of the first quarter, beginning of the second quarter, we're going to start feeling it, and then they're going to really hit us with it in the second, in the middle of the second quarter. Uh, large economic instability. Okay, so expected late second quarter, 2021. Deployment of military personnel into major metropolitan areas as well as major roadways to establish travel checkpoints. We're already starting to see that in, say, Washington. Uh, they've already had, what do they bring in? 10,000, 20,000 uh, military uh, soldiers there, personnel, uh, to, you know, with the whole insurrection stuff, the whole play there. That was. They're gonna keep doing that. They're gonna bring the, the national guard in all the time. They're getting the people used to that. So they're probably gonna do something like that here in Canada. We're gonna have to have something that's gonna need military to come in, get us used to seeing them. Or you know, sometimes they just rely on us watching what's going on in the U.S. as a way of programming us and pr preparing us for that kind of stuff. We'll see. Hopefully, this is. Uh, this stuff kind of doesn't take place. <laughs> There's always still hope that some of this is nonsense, or some of this will get changed, you know, on the way as it as it's planned. Because sometimes they have to change things, right? You don't get exactly the way they say it because they can't time everything perfectly. Sometimes the uh, things take a bit longer to do. Uh, okay, so travel checkpoints, military ch roadway blocks, and all that nonsense restrict travel and movement Pro provide logic logistical support to the area expected by third quarter 2021 so three quarters of the way through the year we're going to start seeing the military come in and that's all we see of this roadmap what happens in the fourth quarter i don't know um, there is a bit more here. I'll, I'll read this and I guess I'll shut down because it's pretty late. And I covered all the main things. I, I was just looking at... I wanted to know exactly what quarter. Because I am not familiar with the business stuff. Anyways, yeah. It's uh, the first quarters. January, February, March. And then, yeah, so on and so forth. If you are not familiar with the how the quarters work anyways let's finish this off by reading the end of this roadmap 
and um just get ourselves prepared for the worst like i've been saying you need to stock up on supplies you really do and you need to come up with a plan uh for a bug in that means you know batten down the hatches get your house prepared for the long haul and you need a bug out plan for if that'll you know that fails and you need to get out you need those kind of plans just in case prepare for the worst ho hope for the best or hope for the best prepare for the worst kind of thing whichever way you want to look at it anyway so let me just uh, read this now because i keep babbling Along with that provided roadmap is the Strategic Planning Committee was asked to design an effective way of transitioning Canadians to meet an unprecedented economic endeavor, one that would change the face of Canada and forever alter the lives of Canadians. What we were told was that in order to offset what was essentially an economic collapse on an international scale, the federal government was going to offer Canadians a total debt relief. This is how it works. The federal government will offer to eliminate all personal debts, mortgages, loans, credit cards, etc., which all, all funding will be provided to Canada by the IMF under what will become known as the World Debt Reset Program, the Great Reset. In exchange for acceptance of this total debt forgiveness, the indiv individual would forfeit ownership of... of uh, any and all property and assets forever. The individual would also have to agree to partake in the COVID-19, COVID-21 vaccination schedule, which would provide the individual with unrestricted travel and unrestricted living under, even under a full lockdown through the use of photo identification referred to as Canada's health pass. You will own nothing, have no privacy, and you will be happy. That's from 2016, from the World Economic Forum. Actually, you know what? It was interesting because uh, Jeff, myself, and some other people, Bug Smasher, I think he is the one who introduced us to the World Economic Forum article, which was... I have, I own nothing, I have no privacy, I don't have a car, and I couldn't be happier, or something like that. Or a lady talks about her life in, in 2030. Or she doesn't have anything, and, and things are great, but uh, she kind of you know, doesn't like the fact that they're always reading her thoughts and, and recording her dreams in her sleep and all that stuff. So she doesn't like that privacy, lack of privacy sometimes. It's ridiculous, but Jeff and I and some others actually uh, we read through that article in one of the Jesse and Friends live streams. You could actually find it in the Jeff Cen Jeff censored encore. He had it there, and I think he has it possibly in the uh, Jeff C live. I think he has it there too. Some Jeff C and Friends, and it's in one of them. It's around 2016, or I guess it'd probably be more like 2017 that you would find it around. Anyways, that was a that was a a good live stream to check out. We had a good time. Anyways, where did I leave off? So, the Canada Health Pass committee members asked who would become the owner of the forfeited property and assets in that scenario and what would happen to lenders of, or financial institutions we were simply told the world debt reset program will handle all of the details several committee members also questioned what would happen to the individual if they refused to participate in the world debt reset program or the health pass or the vaccination schedule and the answer we got was very troubling. Essentially, we were told it was our duty to make sure we came up with a plan to ensure that would that would not hap never happen. We were told it was in the individual's best interest to participate. 
When several committee members pushes, re, pushed resent, relentlessly to get an answer, we were told that those who refused would first live under the lockdown restrictions indefinitely, and that over a short period of time, as more Canadians transitioned into the debt forgiveness program, the ones who refused to participate would be deemed a public safety risk and would be re relocated to into isolation facilities. Once in those facilities, they would be given two options, participate in the debt forgiveness program and be released, or stay indefinitely in an isolation facility under the qualification classification of a serious public health risk and have all their assets seized. <clears throat> the Q zones, like in uh, Songbird. I have yet to watch that movie yet. I, I really have trouble making myself watch movies. It's so hard. I don't know. I can't put myself to it. I just can't. I want to, because there's some things I need to research. I just can't do it. It's so difficult, I just can't put myself to do it. I used to love movies. I used to watch movies all the time. I have a gigantic collection of movies. I have, like, massive amounts of DVDs in the basement, and I haven't picked up one in years, and I can't get myself to watch them, so I'm going to sell a bunch of them. Anyways... So as you can imagine, after hearing all of the this, it turned into quite the heated discussion and escalated beyond anything I never, I, I've ever witnessed before. In the end, it was implied that the PMO, that the whole agenda will move forward no matter who agrees with it or not. That will, that it won't just be Canada, but in fact all nations will have a similar roadmaps and agendas that we need to take advantage of the situation before we promote change or on a, on a grander scale for the betterment of everyone. <clears throat> the members who were opposed and ones who brought up key issues that would arise from such a thing were completely ignored. Our opinions and concerns were ignored. We were simply told to just do it. All I know is that I just is know that I don't like it and I think it's going to place Canadians into a dark future. Well, no kidding, buddy. A dark future. A dark winter future. So that was put out October 14th, two days after that Randy Hillier video in the Parliament, interesting enough. all timed out that way huh I think the intentionally leaked uh, without a doubt this was intentionally put out for us to read I don't think someone literally had a conscious <laughs> and just released this I think this was intentionally put out with, just to get us prepared at least the ones who resist it will know that uh, that they plan to uh, basically FEMA camp us detention center us, Q-zone us, quarantine zone us, whatever you want to freaking call it. That's what they want to do to us. They've been telling us for, many, for, for a very long time. I have a video, uh... Oh wait, I don't even need to do that. That I showed. Uh, stop that. I really gotta do something about that. It's annoying. No, I don't want to play all. Want videos. Uh, it's down here. Oops, what am I doing? Changing the size of my screen, apparently. I'm not gonna play it, or maybe I could. I don't know. But I. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? No, that's not it. No, it's definitely not this far. Sorry, I should know what it looks like. Oh, it's right here. Pledge allegiance or simply disappear. Um, in this video, I have recordings from... The New Order of Barbarians. I believe it's... Possibly tape two. Tape one or tape two. Wherein it talks about people who resisted the New World Order. 
he wasn't calling it the New World Order then, I don't think. Where the hell? I just lost it again. Right here. The New World Order. Basically, is what it was. The Pledges to the New World Plan or whatever. The New Order. He was talking about he would uh, pledge your allegiance or they would disappear to some detention center where they would uh, make you either, you know, pledge your allegiance or basically to off you. And that's basically what we're seeing in all the programming here because we got that. We've got the songbird telling you the Q zones. Um, Q is the number 17. Number 17 in... Uh, in the in the Greek entomology, whatever. If you uh, anim, anim, oh, sorry, I can't talk anagrammatically. Switch the letters for the Roman numerals for seventeen. You get uh, some other things like some weird n and numbers and stuff like that. letters and numbers. And then that translated to they lived or their life is over. Your life is over in the Q zones. Trust the plan. 